What's cracking movie trivia, Schmodown fans? It's your boy C Dub, and today we got part two from the live event. The outlaw John Roca taking on Little Evil himself, J T E. Let's get started. <laughs> Oh, hey, Emma. Hey, Thad. How Hello. are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing just fine. So listen, uh, you know, I won the manager bowl during the spectacular, so I won the right to have one of my competitors have a number one contender spot. Correct. I've been sitting on that decision for a really long time, but uh, I think I've I think I've made a choice. Wonderful. But I just wanted to know from you more of the specifics about how it all works. Yeah, it's a number one contender match. So if your competitor is, say, uh, in the Inner Geekdom League, mm -hmm. they will have the pick from any active Inner, inner Geekdom competitor. Interesting. They'll have a number one contender match. The winner will then play the champion. If it's in the singles league, we'll do top 10. So any of the top 10 singles players, they'll have a number one contender match, and the winner will play the champion. And for the teams, it'll be top five. The winners will play the Patriots. All right, excellent. Well, uh, thank you very much. That was incredibly helpful. I will let you know my decision by the end of the week. Do you have any idea who it might be? Why do I even bother? <laughs> How's it going, guys? If you didn't know about the Patreon, you guys have a chance to support the Schmodown. Now, myself, Mark Ellis, we've taken over the production. Basically, you guys have 16 tiers to choose from. We're trying to give back to the fans. Go and check it out right there. If you want to support the Schmodown by becoming a patron today, go ahead and do it. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've given us. And, yeah, there's some really crazy tears in there. I'd love to get your opinions on it. Now, go enjoy the match. Go do it. It's a good match, for God's sakes. Script. Okay. okay. And for we bet sixteen. Yeah. And we said a bottle of wine. The answer and the winners going into the fight. That's it. Box office. Oh I don't know, Laurel and Hardy. What and your winners by way of technical knockout and still undefeated, undisputed movie trivia starter, champions of the world, little evil, and the insider, Patreon. Listen, I'm a winner, guys. 
God damn it. And I, I, I may go down and I may take this hard for a day or two, but then I bounce back. The best way to get back on top is to win. Now, I let my partner down, but I can't let Outlaw Nation down a second time. I'm going to lead. If I'm going to be a real leader, then I got to win. Well, I wrote Jane Fonda then. What? What? Is that what? Jane Fonda to you? What? You didn't write the answer down. I wrote Jane Fonda down here. Just quickly. Let me That's see. Jane Fonda! Hey, well, we well, let me, yeah, see I feel it. like we gotta see that. Let's see it. Yeah, I mean, no one got it. It's not like I'm cheating from them. Yeah. They didn't get it. What? They didn't get it. Oh, no, wait, hold on. On the hold on a sec. Three challenges. Oh, Challenge. Challenge. Uh, challenge. All right, challenge. Okay. The, the rules as outlined on the screen mm -hmm. before the round is to write the answer down. Yes. If you're telling like that, that was the answer written down, no, no, you're going to challenge. There, there, there was challenge challenge nothing written on the board. No, there right. was written on yeah, the yeah, board. Yeah, he wrote it in person quickly in the last second. Jane Fonda. He wrote down. Is it still there? Is it still there? He already wrote it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jane Fonda. 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 Jane
two matches at the El Portal Theater in North Hollywood, California. And now your hosts, Mark and Christian. Mark Ellis, Christian Arla, the Schmo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Movie Trivia Schmodown Live! This is the second match here. I'm Christian Harloff. Mark Ellis, how are you, buddy? Oh, this crowd showed up again on another <laughs> night for another match. They did. They must really like us. Well, it's nice to have them here, obviously, as we did the Wildberries and the Real Rejects, and that was a fun match, and there was a lot of, you know, it, it was there was camaraderie, but it was still a nice match. And there's a no lot bad of, blood. There's a lot of correct answers in that. Now, what we know we're getting in this headlining match is a lot of correct answers. What we don't know is this something else is going to break out onto the stage that we're going to have to stop. Well, Rogue has already been part of something like that at the Spectacular. I don't think he's looking to get physical in either. Is the, uh, JTE doesn't have to. we got Roka versus JTE. Here's what, it, this is how it stands, is that JTE says it, and he's right. In the movie Trivia Showdown, in Screen Junkies movie fights, Roka has never beaten JTE in wow. any of that competitive. If you want to look wow. at those both sports, he's never beaten them. And it's got, I know, not it's got, I know it hurts Roka. I know Roka very well. He's the most competitive person I know in the Schmodown. And it eats him up. That little evil just is like smiling at him every single time. He took the championships away from him. He TKO'd him in a defense, and then he knocked him out in another defense. He right now is not thrilled and wants that revenge. He needs to step over JTE to try to get past those three victories to get himself a singles title shot. That's right. If anybody else looked at JTE and said, hey, he looks like Ivan Drago, you'd say, are you sure you don't need your eyes checked? But when John Roca says that's his nemesis, he goes to the top of mountains, he rides his horse 10,000 miles up, and he screams from the top of his lungs, J-T-E! Which makes sense, but that's the dangerous Roca. J Roca has been in situations like that very much. Look at what happened with Mance back in the day. Mance, he had that match with Mance. He lost that thing with Bespin. Would have killed most competitors. It didn't. It built Roca. You look at the stuff that happened with Dan Merle. He wanted Dan Merle. He fought to get Dan Merle, and he beat Dan Merle. And then, you know, he, he, then he wound up losing the championship, but you, you look at what happened then with Riley. He, he had that, yeah, he lost the championship to Riley, but he also beat Riley twice. He had, he's got this drive in him, the, the thing with team action. And now you've got this just overall feud with him and JTE. The tensions are high. Top 10 can't stand Patriots. The Patriots can't stop top 10. And JTE is another one. JTE, yes, he's got that. He's got those team belts. They've had it for over a year. He wants that singles belt. He wants it bad. He had a hiccup, you know, in the finals against the now champion Sam Levine. He just lost in that triple threat win. Well, it shouldn't, Rachel Cushion kicked the shit out of him. But I mean, like you look at, you look at, he did. She did. She she was dominant in that match. There's no doubt about it. So, but JTE wants to overstep that, and JTE wants to beat Roca to get. To that title shot. I, I think I see a theme here with this headlining match, crowd and Christian and everybody watching at home. It's that John Roca isn't somebody who loses and then just goes home and cries about it. He loses and he lets that failure make himself better. But nobody has failed more than JTE, and he has also allowed that to turn him into damn near of a champion. One of them's going to get a little bit closer to that so-called mythical belt right here on stage. You're right to joke about that because when you look at the disaster of a year that JT had in 2016... We made a documentary! <laughs> But what's crazy about it, though, is that JTE earned that comeback player of the year. The year he had last year was incredible. I mean, it really was. He's a very, I mean, now when you used to say, oh, I'll put you up against JTE, everyone's like, sure. Now you go, oh, man, I don't know. Because JTE is a main eventer. It's why he's headlining here tonight because people, they, a lot of people want Roca to win tonight here. But I don't think everyone just says it's a sure thing. Like, JTE is going to be tough. JTE is the team champion for over a year and almost, like, three months now for a reason. They're great headliners. Let's make no mistake about it. The reason why people showed up. Right here. Right here. Thank you. All right. So, guys, we are... We can are... put the Wildberries up again, and they'd show up. Listen, before we get to this, we're going to hear from our competitors, and we're going to hear from them right now.
John Roca. I don't want to make a mistake here, guys. This is a moment for John Roca. This is not a moment for me. To me, this match, it's not really shit. I beat this guy so many times, it's just become tiresome. See, here's the thing, here's the thing. You guys are here because you were sold about the possibility of the impossible. You want to see history. You want to see something you've never seen before. You know how hard it is to sell that? Well, you're going to try and see it today. Because John Roca, I know you want to beat me really bad. See, here's the thing. I've been a champ for a year and a half. You were a champ once for, what, a week and a half? You see, when I leave this theater, no matter what happens, I'm going to leave knowing I'm a true champion because I've shown it for a year and a half. If you win this thing, you're going to be running around here like you won the lotto. You're going to be high-fiving people. You're going to be like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. <laughs> Not me, guys. I'm going to brush my shoulder off, go to bed real easy because I know at the end of the day I'm a champ. Last thing I'll say is, Roca, I know you want to beat me, but you got to get your head out of the clouds or Cloud City <laughs> or Bespin, but you know all about Bespin. See, that word is tied to you because you lost. This belt is tied to me because I'm a winner. <laughs> wow. shit you gotta be kidding me he ain't got his rat face part of the lie and get him out of situations now bitch gotta go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me the great one the best one you can make fun of me all you like but i'm a two-time champion the fuck are you jt <laughs> little boy you can talk all you mess but i come to bring my best you saw me fall apart you saw me go down you saw me get angry but what did ella say Defeat only makes me stronger, makes me hungry. Ask Team Action. Ask Team Action. Is that bitch out of prison yet? You out of prison yet? <laughs> That's right. Hey, Ben, you get a suit that fits yet? Jesus Christ. We got something to talk about here. Schmodown Live, we're doing this thing live, baby. I want to hear you. Woo! Now, when I started this thing, I started it for me. Christian's right. When he came to me and he said, John Roca, I'm doing this thing. And I almost jumped to the phone. Give me the belts. All the belts. I want everything and all the records. And he said, but you got to take it one step at a time. And I did, right? I climbed all the way to the mountain. If you watch those promos, I told Dan a year before I beat him that I was coming for him. And then I did it. The Schmoes knows we're talking a mess. What happened? Top 10 took him out. Top 10, boom, I, yeah, if I'm correct, right? And that's what we do, and that's what I do. So I come for the belt. I got to step over this guy, and I got my designs on someone else after I take care of JTE. So Lion's Den, let me tell you something right now. You can stop calling me the outlaw. All you bitches can call me the poacher. Because I'm going to hang your skins on my fucking wall. And I'm going to start with JTE. Outlaw out. Nice. I mean, you knew, you knew it would be heated. You knew that these two were going to go out. I mean, JTE is just rubbing salts into previous wounds. And Roca is trying to lick him. But Roca is ready to kick some ass. And you know the way that he gets fired up. You know how much this means to him because this does. I mean, th this is the end of this for, for Roca and JT. I mean, it, it's, it's got to be. Yeah, uh, stirring monologues from two grown men who have not yet filed for their taxes this year. Um, 
I think what I'm really looking forward to most is after you get through all the hubbub, all the hype, all the hoopla, these are two human beings, and I say that loosely, that really know something about movie tribute. They love cinema. These are cinephiles. They yeah. are oh, fans yeah. of celluloid, and they know a lot about it, and they can recall it like that, like that, like that, and it's about to go down, and I'm excited to watch it. Me too, but that's why they're here. Yeah. That is why yeah. they are the two of the best that we have, but it's really crazy because of all the competitors that we do have and because right now we talked to the champion earlier all these people that are now going for the championship it's it's wide open and jte and roker at a standstill here because whoever loses is going to be bumped to the bottom there and the winner has a legitimate chance to win a couple matches and get a shot at the championship this is roka's roka wants that singles belt he wants that singles belt so does jte so this this is the perfect match for this to happen, and for the Schmodown audience here live, they're about to see a war. You know, the great John Lennon once said, imagine there's no heaven above us or a hell below us. There's going to be a heaven. There's going to be a hell. One of them is going to be euphoric after this. The other one is going to be in the pits with a fork up their ass. <laughs> All right, well, if you guys are ready, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia Schmodown. Oh, boy. Introducing first. It's been a long time. Representing top ten with a record of seven wins, four defeats. He is. Goodness, no pyrotechnics were involved. Yeah, all in right, that. sure. Top ten's ready. Everybody excited here. All right, guys. All right, so John, if you can sit down, please. Matt. Okay. Thank you. Very funny comedian, Matt Nost. Yep. All right. Here we go. All right. All right there was a big amount of of cheers and love. I wonder if the same is going to happen when I say, and his opponent. Showdown singles finalist and the reigning movie 
Cruz and is yawning at the crowd, yawning at the crowd, not shaking anyone's hand as he comes down the aisle. Dale the dude screaming at the dead. And no Tom Dagnino anywhere to be found. Very interesting here that Dagnino's not here. But the dead, the dead, not the crowd favorite. No, it almost appears that if we woke him up from a nap, he would be here today. Yeah, he. Sitting down before we start, JT, do you have anything you want to say to Roka here? Yeah, Roka, don't get too nervous. Come on. Uh, Roka, you got anything you want to say to Evil? It's a big deal for him. It's 500. Please. What I got to say to a 500 player? Come on. All right. Well, listen. Tail the dude. Tail the dude. You ready for this? All right. Let's go. Tail of the tape real quick here. Roka Western's biopics and... I'm not saying it. Yeah, that's um, why you better not say it. <laughs> we got JTE, who has 80s movies, Spielberg movies, and spelling. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, all right, so Mark, why don't you re read the rules for round number one? Very interesting. On stage, we have a belt and a mask, yet we're not in a Fifty Shades movie, thank God. <laughs> In round one, each competitor is going to hear eight questions. These are questions asked to the field. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. The questions come from eight different categories of movie trivia. Should you get all eight answers right in round one, you are asked a bonus question. This is to you and only you. Keep in mind there are two rules to be aware of. The JTE rule. JT, I probably don't have to explain that to you. If you need a question repeated, simply ask. You get three of those per match. You also have one challenge rule. If your challenge is upheld, you do get to keep your challenge, Christian. All right, guys. So make sure, again, write the answer down. Say it out loud. And it's not a joke. Please say it and write it. And <laughs> Roka, are you ready? I'm ready. JTE, are you ready? Let's do this. Then let's get ready to smile! There we go. Round number one, category one, animated. Animated, mm. what Scottish actor voiced Stoic the Vast, the father of Hiccup, in the How to Train Your Dragon films? Uh, fun fact to the crowd about Christian, he listens to the How to Train Your Dragon soundtrack Fantastic. in his car do. every day. Same guy who's doing this the score for Solo. Five. Four. You host Lord, the Star Lord. Wars show. We get it. Two. One. Roka. Stop running, JT. Roka. Gerard Butler. Correct. JT. Didn't have it. Didn't have it. Roka takes the lead. First blood has been drawn. First blood. Roka coming out strong. All right. Next question. Your next question comes from the world of comedies. <laughs> <laughs> and your question is, Billy Wilder directed Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon as cross-dressing musicians in which 1959 romantic comedy? Roka trying to get ahead here on right. the little list of Beatles. Roka's first decade on Earth in the 50s? Five. That's me. Four. Four. Three. Two. One. Evil. Uh, some like it hot. That's correct. Roka. Some like it hot. Roka, two. JT, one. Next question. The category of dramas. Dramas. Who plays Ivan Locke in the 2013 film Locke? This is intense. Feel it in the crowd. This is good. It is. Five. This is good. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Roka. Tom Hardy. Correct. JTE. Tom Hardy. Got it. <laughs> We move on to horror thriller. Ugh. Feels like a horror movie in here right now. It does. What actress played Rachel Watson, a woman who becomes obsessed with her neighbors in 2016's The Girl on the Train? You know that was based on a novel? I'm watching the match. Five. Four. That's how you I yes and, kids. Three. Two. One, Roka. I think it's JT person. Thank you, JT. <laughs> uh, Emily Block. Correct, Roka. 
Emily Blunt. Got it. Nice little show of sportsmanship yeah. there from Roka. Yeah. All right, next one. Action adventure. Who played the villainous Poppy in Kingsman, The Golden Circle? Uh, I believe the movie is based on a team in the Schmodown. That's... It should, well, yeah, they're both bad. Oh, yeah, more. Wow. I didn't like the second one. Sorry. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Roca. Julianne Moore. That is correct. JTE. Julianne Moore. Got it. Roca and JTE scrapping it out. Jab for jab here. Five, four. Next Your one. next category is in the world of romantic comedies. <laughs> oh. Who played the other male co-lead alongside Colin Firth in 2001's Bridget Jones's Diary? Christian Harloff, have you ever kept a diary? Hugh Grant. False. You had to think about it. Five, four, three. Your diary. Two. Ellis outed me today. One. JTE. Uh, Hugh Grant. Correct. Roca. Hugh Grant. Roca still perfect. Roca still perfect. Getting closer to that perfect Next round one. Question here in fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. Oh, Who played Bad Ape in War of the Planet of the Apes? Hmm. I have a joke, but it's too obvious. I keep that one to myself. Yeah. Tell me later. <laughs> Five. Four. Three. Steve's on. Two. One, pens down, Roca. I don't know it. Didn't have it. JTE. Steve's on. Got it. Ties it up. No JTE perfect game anymore. No, not only, but it was not only perfect, ties it up. All right, so here we go. The last question in this round. Fitting way to close out round one is in the world of the Oscars. The Academy Awards, which are filmed in this very theater. False. One point for you. What film released wide in 2009 won Best Picture at the 82nd Academy Awards? So it was released in 2009, won the Academy Award that year. Rachel Cushing is trying to not scream Hurt out the Locker? Answer, right? I believe we can clarify it was in limited release in 2008. Yes. So it had award consideration. Right. Wide in 2000. Stop talking. Five, four, three, two, one. JTE? Let's take a guess here. No Country for Old Men? That's incorrect. Roca? No, I didn't. The answer was the Hurt Locker. The Hurt ah, Locker was the locker. answer. Okay, tie game. Tie game, Jen. Snyder coming out. Snyder coming out. Raw and there. Snap right, and, and then Nose coming out. Nose coming out here. Oh, and wait, look, Dale the Dude is on the stage. Dale right. the Dude trying to clear up. All right, yeah, chaos yeah, with the den coming out. Storing some more. All right, let's get, let's get, all right, we know, we know, we know. Everybody, Dale, but I like that Nose and Dale came in here too. It's not a Lions Den versus Roca thing here. When they came on stage, thank God I had a Coors Light to drink on stage. Yeah. All right, here we go, guys. Round number two, Mark, how's it work? In round number two, that there wheel contains movie categories. Each wedge will have six questions from said movie category. Once you spin it, if you're not sure you want to answer questions from that category, you are allowed to have another spin. However, you must stick with whatever category you then spin. Each question in round two is worth two points. Not sure of the answer, you can check to multiple choice, at which point the value of the question goes down to one. Keep in mind competitors and crowd. There is stealing in round two. Two, it's a tied ball game right now, Christian. So I believe because Little Evil has a much more expensive piece of hardware on his table than Roka does on his, he is allowed the choice whether he wants to spin first or defer to the outlaw. I'll be going first. All right, JT, Court. make sure JT, make sure you spin from the wheel, not the peg, please. Why is Go. Westerns on here? Spin from the Do wheel. Do not grab the pegs. Grab the, the actual wheel. Thank there you, you very much. Caress it. There's a spin. That's a good spin. As Ken says, the spin is in. Good spin. Got to figure he's looking for that action adventure. I would think so. Or is Sly and Arnie choice. on the wheel? Uh, Sly and Arnie might. It could be Sly and Arnie, Christian. Look out! It is a Sly and Arnie. Sly, Sly and Arnie. JT hits Sly and Arnie. JD, JT, do you want to keep it? Uh, I'm staying. I'll take it. You better right. believe I'm staying. All right. Wow. All right. JTE, four questions. Sly and Arnie. Four questions. 
in the realm of Sly and Arnie, JTE get one of his strengths here. JTE, okay. Love it. JTE, Arnold. Well, we're live. I'll tell you what. In this particular movie, Arnold finds an illegal clone of himself in what film? The Sixth Day. First of all, I don't want to use repeat, but with your accent, I can barely understand nah, what you're fine, saying. Fine, fine, <laughs> That's fair, that's fair, that's fair. That, no, that's fair. I'm just saying. That's fair. It's the Sixth Day. That's fair. That's fair. And there's plenty of videos online where you can see I can answer it if you need me to. I understood him. I want to apologize to our fans from Austria. All right. Arnold finds an illegal clone of himself in what film? And fuck you. Uh, that would be The Sixth Man. That's incorrect. That's incorrect. What did, what did he say? He said The Sixth Man. That was The Sixth Day, isn't it? That's correct. That Two is a steel. monumental steal. Big steal. The Sixth yeah, Man. Yeah, you're right. Incorrect. Right. Monumental steal. Christian, JTE clearly had that movie confused Second with Marlon Wayans' classic, The Sixth Man. Here we go. Here we go, JTE. So, your second question here. Here we go, JTE. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's All right. Myself. Who co-starred with Sylvester Stallone in Rhinestone? Uh, Dolly Parton. Two points. All right. Question three. Damon Killian is the villain in what Arnie film? Five. Repeat. Damon Killian is the villain in which Arnie film? I'm not sure, but I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna say Commando. It's incorrect. <laughs> Two point steal. Jesus. Damon Killian. Five. Four. Yeah, I don't know. Three. This uh, raw deal. In the game? For the running man. Ah. Oh, running man. All right, JT. Should have known that. Your last question here, JT. Yep. Who played Arnie's daughter in True Lies? It's, um,. Shit, what is her name? Fuck. She was in, uh, Bring It On. Ah, oh, fuck, what is her name? I would go multiple choice, I'll know it when I hear it. I know her name. It's, um, uh, hold on, uh, it's, uh, Alicia Duku. Alicia Duku. Am I pronouncing I, I, that right? I'm not gonna give you Alicia Duku. Uh, it's Eliza Dushku. Two points steal for Roca. So John Roca comes out of this in the lead. Who would have thought that was coming? Are you really? Christian, we can't give you Count Dooku. Can't do it. This is... Can't do it. This is monumental for a number of different reasons, not the least of which is that Sly and Arnie, as a wheel slice in this match, is actually a wheel slice that was selected by one of our Patreon supporters. And boy, did it factor in heavily to this match where JTE spawned the category he wanted, and he's not the one with the lead at the end of it. All right, so... Alicia Dooku. I don't know her name. Wow. Count, well, count, may, was that, maybe that was Count Dooku's niece. All right. Now, John Roca is on. It's time for John Roca to spin the wheel. John, please don't spin from the peg. Spin from the wheel. All right. The crowd showing their support. Can they power Roca through this match? Looks like what? It looks like luck's on your side, bro. He's got a chance here to do some damage. Roka can go. If Roka, Roka can do some damage here. Hey, Christian, you can't say JT didn't get what he wanted under the Christmas tree, and now Roka comes downstairs to find a big box of westerns. Your first question in the world of westerns, your first of four. What famous singer co-starred with John Wayne? in the movies Rio Bravo and the Sons of Katie Elder. Dean Martin. Two, Two points. points. <laughs> Roka doing in his strength, which AT could not do in his. For your next question, in 2016's The Magnificent Seven, who played the soft-spoken mountain man and tracker Jack Horn? Vincent D'Onofrio. Two points. <laughs> Look at Roka. Roka looking like the Roka of old right now. Your third question in round two. 
who played an ex-Confederate colonel and co-lead to John Wayne's ex-Union colonel in 1969's The Undefeated. Five, gotta take chances. Four, three, two. I'll repeat the question. Who played an ex-Confederate colonel and co-lead to John Wayne's ex-Union colonel in 1969's *The Undefeated*? Five, four, three, two. Rock Hudson. Two points. Two points. <laughs> and Rogue has a chance to be he up knew by. That. He's he got a knew chance that. to be up. He's That's got a drama chance. right there. He's got a chance to be up by 10. The Roka chants in the crowd are getting louder and louder. All right, Roka. Your I, uh, last question. Are we at TKO mode here? What's happening? Not yet. No, no, no. Your last question. <laughs> JT is seeing three Rokas in the ring right now. <laughs> Hit the one in the middle. Your last question in round number two, Roka, and this is for a 10-point lead going into round three. What Native American tribe does Kevin Costner develop a relationship with in Dances with Wolves? I did not write it, Chris. Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are, is it A, Pawnee, B, Comanche, C, Sioux, or D, Osage? B? No, C. Five, four, Sioux? The thing with John Roke is you never know if he's milking it or not. The answer is Sue. One point. So JTE is within nine now. I mean, <laughs> nine. Nine. Oh, boy. As we get, wait a minute, what's happening over That's here? That's pretty much what's, else. what's happening over uh -oh. here? What's happening over here? What's happening over here? Get him out, Dale. Dale, get him out. No. Get him out, Dale. And, uh, stay get there, him Dale. out, Dale. Stay there, Dale. Stay there for a second. Get him out, Dale. Get him out. As we what's, get, what's going on here? Get him out. We're getting close get to him out. Out. my house. No one wants to listen to your bullshit. Get, get the, the fuck out of here. We're getting close. You should have been here. Get out of here. You should have been here and stop mugging someone, whatever you're doing. <laughs> Dagnino trying to throw Roke off his game, crashing the interview, the, the match here as we get to the third round. We get to the third round. Mark, tell us how it works. You know, that Finstock, always a card. Yeah, I mean, he's a real scumbag. In round three. The rules are each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers that range from 1 to 20. Because the owl is in the lead, he'll be giving us his numbers first. Each number corresponds to a movie category up here at the answer desk. Your first question is going to be worth two points. Your next question is worth three points. And your last question, should we get that far, JTE, is worth five points. Like I said, John Roca, you are going to be giving us your numbers first. Have at it, sir. 8, 10, and 12. 8. 10 and 12. All right, little evil. Uh, 5, 11, 13. 5. <laughs> 5, 11, and 13. All right, Let, let's, let's start with JTE. All right, JTE, you're going to mm. get your two pointer here. All right, JTE, your two pointer here is in the category of new releases. New releases, JTE. Mm -hmm. Who plays Greg Sestero in The Disaster Artist? Uh, Dave Franklin. Two Frank points. Frank. The two-pointer, guys. Two-pointer. Two-pointer. All right. Our next one is category 11. Category 11. We've got Westerns. Now, JTE, if you miss this. This is some poetic justice right here. If you miss this, JTE, yeah. John Roca will win yeah. via TKO. Here you go. JTE in category of Westerns. You cannot spin again. Got that. <laughs> Name the actor who faced off against Liberty Valance first with his law books and then with a gun in the man who shot Liberty Valance. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. Uh, let me get a repeat up because that was a lot. Name the actor who faced off against Liberty Valance first with his law books and then with a gun in the man who shot Liberty Valance. First, let me say, I'm happy everyone here that bought a ticket. <laughs> Guess to see something that's never been done before. Five, um, four, Jane Fonda. Three. And your winner!
as somebody who loves to be loved, I, I imagine at some point JTE and, and being the heel that we know him to be, I imagine the booze gets you, but Roka clearly, from the time he was introduced, feeding off the energy of the crowd, but I think really the big thing was round two. Well, round he two got a wedge that he wanted, and he was able to knock Westerns out of the park. JT got what he wanted. That's it. He, oh, you, just, you nailed it. It's the fact that they both got, it wasn't like, oh, well, he got something he didn't know, and he got something he knew. They both got categories they were strong in. Roka delivered. JT did not. And that's that's what happened. I mean, when you look when you look at what happened right there, I mean, that was something. JTE at this point, though, you know, he, he, like he said, it's just a matter of what does he do next. He's got yeah. that belt around his yeah. around his arm. But the question, what I'm very curious about, is what Roka, who's Roka going to challenge? Who is Roka going to challenge in that interview? Because that's the next match that we've got to see because now Roka's in the title hunt again. That's right. Uh, in the meantime, JT is going to have to go home and look at his Sly and Arnie Fatheads and apologize to them. Right. We throw it over to Jen Sturger now, who will have an interview with the loser and the winner. Oh, JTE, you're lucky I wore my flats today. Thank you. <laughs> that, was, that was a really... Well, that's not all you did. What dumpster did you climb out of to come to this interview? Please let me finish this my This guy job. got me a car to my house, all right? And they, they take me to... Uh, it was supposed to take me to jail. They take me to Sun Valley. And then a car broke down. And that's what took me so long to get here. What the fuck? Stupid. Oh, JT, circus aside, that was a really yep. rough match for you. Tell you know what? what? Again, I'm glad for the people that came here and bought a ticket because I want them to see something they've never seen before. They never saw Roka beat me. And for them to come here and see this is making literally history. I, I'm, I'm a little happy for them. Listen, I've been a champ for a year and a half. Losing a guy like this ain't going to sweat me for one second. What is next for you then? Uh, continue being a champion, first of all. Look at this. You've had, you've had success. A year and a half. You've had success in team, but yes. does that mean that you need Jeff Snyder? Yeah, of course. Listen, Jeff is, uh, we're a team, okay? We're just as good as when we're separated. The thing is, okay, he got Westerns. I'm pretty sure Elijah uh, Duku. I, that's the thing that pisses me off because I can't pronounce her name. I don't like this line of questioning. Yeah, th yeah, just because I didn't know how to pronounce her name. Give me a freaking break. I knew who it was. She's been in some movies. I know who she is. You have roles that were specifically invented for you and yet you still come unprepared. No, I got the repeat. <laughs> Come on, listen, I'm, I'm getting a lot of bias right here from you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. The biggest, listen, the biggest mistake I made here was saying the sixth man instead of the sixth day. But honestly, I was half paying attention to this match. I was just there because Roka wanted to finally win. He wanted to have a win against me. I still will say to this day, what's the record? How many times have I beat him? How many times have he beat me? It was like eight to one? I forget. One out of one. That's what you call this? He got Westerns, and I got a Westerns question. There's something going on behind the scenes. This was a charity match. It was charity. It was like Thunder Lips and uh, Rocky and Rocky Three. Tom, will we you know, see, and will we... JT was taking it not serious like Rocky, and then this jack off was taking it super serious. It was supposed to be an exhibition match, not this. It was an exhibition. Uh, here's the thing, man. I'm just, I've been a champion for a year and a half. I maybe lost the hunger a little bit. I see these players who I've seen so many times, who I've beaten so many times. How am I supposed to, like, get motivated? Give me something worthy. Tom, will we be seeing all of your team, the Lions, dead in the free-for-all? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Roka, yeah. Next is next up is Schneider for Roka. If, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But uh, what do you have to say, Cam? I can pronounce shit. Uh, we'll work that out. Yes, I am right now telling you, Jennifer that I will be at the free-for-all because Sam Witwer, he's got to get ready for me. I'm going to win that free-for-all, and I'm going for Witwer, and I'm taking back the belt that the system took away from me. I think we're, we're done we'll here. We'll all be there. We'll all be at the free-for-all. I think we're done here. Chris I want to say one last thing. The only Maybe time not. I will ever play John Roca again is when he has a belt, and I don't see that happening anytime soon. Right. Oh. Poof. Then out. All right, so as you, as you, thank you, Jen, for, poor Jen Sturger for having to go through that. Um, that was a lot of dude in that interview. Well, yeah, I mean, look, that's the Lions then. That's what the Lions then do. They don't, they don't take responsibility for anything. JT got his ass whooped tonight, and, that, and that's basically, that's what it was. Here comes the winner down to the interview. Yeah, but, I mean, look, uh, when you hear that, though, you hear JT, the, for the, the thing that JT was saying, though, JT was talking about it again and again, that he was the champion. He's the champion. We're going to see him in teams because he's starting off. He's having a bad year so far. He's 0-2. And now as he's probably going to stick with teams for a little bit. Um, 
but it's the story right now. We know. It's the outlaw. What's he feeling? How's he feeling? He's back on top, at least for now. Who's next? What's going to happen? Who's he going to play? What's the challenge? I mean, how are we, how are we going to end the night tonight? Well, I know what his future is. What's that? He's going to talk to Jen Sturger right now. I like now. You're, you're the master of that. <laughs> That's right, Mark Ellis. I am going to talk to the outlaw. John Roca, <laughs> congratulations you, on finally beating JT. Yeah. He's had your number in movie fights yes. and in the schmodown. Well, hi, Mark. Yeah, yeah. And finally, yeah. took one home. Yeah, well, listen, when you play someone one-on-one, -on -one, it's a whole other ball game. You can't depend on your buddy to bail you out every time or mess with the rules or try some uh, lawyer speak to try to win. You got to show your knowledge. And, hell, he had every advantage. We were coming tied out of that first round. He got Sly and Arnie. What do you want from me? Were you a little nervous when he landed Sly and Arnie? Did you see me get nervous? Nah. <laughs> Focused up. When I'm dialed in, ain't nobody can beat me when I'm dialed in. And that's the truth. Tell me how good it felt to land on Westerns. Oh, it felt great. You saw me walk around that table. I was having a ball. <laughs> that's the thing. These people have been amazing tonight. All of them. They carried me to this victory. They carried me. All of you own this victory. You know, you go, when you, lo when you lost the way we did, my fault not asking for a repeat. I had the answer right, didn't write it down legibly. I get it. I was hurt. I felt bad. Like Ellis said, went home, sat with it. But then I said, you got to let it go. I even called Christian. I was like, Christian, maybe it's time for me to retire. Maybe I ain't got it no more. Maybe I'm the old dog in a yard full of young dogs. And then I showed up tonight ready to kick this guy's ass. And, I did. and all you young ones, all you new rooks, I ain't done by a mile. So come bring it. Don't sing it. Bring it. Because I'm here to win that belt back. Levine, you won by a letter, and I want my title back. So I'm coming for you. But first, look, I know there was talk. I'm sorry, Jen. You want to ask a question? I'm going to go crazy. You know, you know how I am. I did. You know how I, heard, I am. I heard there might be some kind of announcement that you want to make. Oh, yeah. Well, there's one. And that is, I know people talked about McWeenie. There was this talk about McWeenie. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not done with the lion's den. I mean what I said. I'm poaching the fuck out of those boys. I'm hanging those skins on my wall. So Jeff Snyder, Snyder, you Jane Fonda son of a bitch, I'm coming for you next. I'm going to whoop the fuck out of you. Then Finstock just for practice. And Knapsack, if it ain't in the stars, you don't know it. So I'm going to smoke your ass next too. And this is my boy here, Matt Nost. We team top ten. You're still vastly outnumbered right now by the lion's den, though. That's right, I am. So there's only one way to solve it. Actually, there's four ways to solve it. And I'm going to tell you the four real soon. Well, that's it. I mean, look, so John Roca teasing the return of the four horsemen. Wow. The four horsemen. So the question of who's going to be in the four horsemen, I mean, I, I, this is the first time hearing of it, um, but that's what he did last time. He set it up, and he set up the four horsemen, and then we saw Bibiani, obviously, and then Burnett, but I, the, those two, those two aren't going to, aren't going to be in the horsemen. So who, who could be the new horsemen? We don't know, but. John Roca is back on top, at least for now. I'll tell you this. Whoever joins the new Horseman faction, like, like John Roca said, he's got a doorbell sign that says, you better bring it or don't ring it. He knows how to play. He wants people who are serious about this league. And I'm happy to say that here tonight, we have placed over $280 into the swear jar. Oh, yeah. yeah. It worked out. Yeah. I mean, it was a hell of an event. I mean, both both yeah. videos, if you watched on Tuesday and you watched today, but if you were here for the live event, you got the Wild Berries beating the Real Rejects. And now John Roca... TKO's JTE. He rides again. The main event. The Outlaw's tonight. horse. The Outlaw is back. And so everybody out there right now, if you are brand new, make sure that you subscribe to Collider Video, share, do all that, keep on commenting, let people know about the movie Trivia Schmodown, and if you haven't joined the Patreon, do it today. But I'd like to thank the crowd here today. Thank you guys very much. It was absolutely amazing. A lot of fun. I was so excited to see everybody. It was a really great experience to do this. Yeah, I, just a huge thank you to both Full Screen Live and to the El Portal Theater for hosting this event. Like you said, I challenge everybody out there who's watching this right now, tell your friends about the movie trivia showdown. They like movie trivia. They're going to love this league. And I challenge everybody out there in the audience right now to you. You don't have to do a damn thing more. Thank you guys for showing up. Have a
great evening, everybody. For Christian Harloff, I am Mark Ellis, signing off from the movie trivia showdown live. And stay there, I'm going to throw some shirts into the crowd. As you know, I have this number one contender spot to give to someone in our faction, and I've been sitting on the decision for a while. I've really been thinking about it, and, uh, you know, I've made my decision, and I, I really want to offer it to you. You are just one of the hardest working people in this league. You're smart, you're capable, and you've put in your time, and, well, let's face it, you fucking deserve it. Uh, wow. Um, I'm, like, super flattered and really surprised. Uh, I, but, I mean, I don't know, like, don't, don't you think that maybe we should save it for the teams? Like, you know you guys are gonna get there. You guys are a strong team. I believe in you. I don't think you need the leg up. You've beaten Sam before, and I think you could do it again. All you have to do is beat one person, and then you get a shot at him and the belt. I do think that Rachel and I are gonna get there. I do. Um, so, okay, how does, how does this work? Look at the top 10 competitors in singles and pick someone. All right. You let me know who you wanna take on and I will formally issue the challenge. Woo! What's up, Schmodown fans? Frank here coming at you with your Schmodown breakdown. Oh, buddy. Clark Wolf going for the belt. Ah. So. Roka knocking out little evil. That was impressive. I I can't wait for Roka's next match. Hopefully he uh he beats down that uh pit squeak Snyder. But Clark Wolf, I can't wait to watch her. I wanna see Clark win a belt. Well, this was a lot of fun. Schmodown live in full effect. If you like my reactions. You subscribe to my YouTube channel, Christopher Woodburn. You can find me on Twitter, Chris Woodburn83. Facebook, Christopher Michael Woodburn. And if you do Schmodown Reactions, come join the MCS Fan Reaction League on Facebook. It's a lot of fun. So until next time, it's your boy C-Dub. Peace.